Hey, Glenn. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Hey. Hey, and there's the speaker. I always love when the speaker's early. Hello, Stu. Nope, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Oh, and here, I thought you were congratulating me for being early and you want me to speak today. Oh, well, <laughs> you know, if, yeah, we, we, we can squeeze you in. <laughs> has, I have a feeling has Stu's going to fill the entire time. As he awkwardly chuckles. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, RT said he'd be just a few minutes late, but Daniel is so nice okay. to meet you. Yeah, it's uh, great to meet you as well. We've um, got uh, 184 re registered for the event. Uh, they'll start pouring in. Um, we usually tend to get about, well, we were getting 60%, but I'd say it's more like 50% nowadays. Um, so hopefully. I, I'm hopefully looking forward to up. helping you out and uh, working with you on your podcast because, you know, I, I just get addicted to uh, helping folks. And honestly, I, uh, I let all my employees do my work for me because I'm just <laughs> wanting to be a podcast host. And who would have ever guessed? that I'd be a podcast host uh, after graduating from school in 1977. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm planning on doing uh, podcasting until I'm uh, dead, but it is I fun. I can't believe we're going to get a million uh, downloads this year uh, coming up in a few months. Uh, that to me is just as weird as it possibly can be. So I'm going to shut up. And sit you know, I think a lot of people are moving into oil and gas because they, uh, they see you know the tax benefits for one thing uh but just you know the prices um well, well rather it's getting harder to find good returns in a lot of other areas and so they're oh. they're uh, absolutely you, you may have a different perspective <laughs> oh uh it's uh it's cinco de mayo sorry <laughs> <laughs> yay I, I didn't bring my my gear um yeah. but it is somebody's name's james bond now how cool is that now, some people uh come on with fake names i i don't know is this is this james bond a real person bond there there is somebody who always logs on as john doe also <laughs> I, I suspect him as well <laughs> No, the phones are ringing off the hook for 1031 exchange information into oil and gas. So it's, it's mm. kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm not surprised about that. Um, so I, I don't know, James Bond, if you want to take yourself off mute, but I, I'm, I'm kind of curious. Is that your real name? You don't have to give us your real name if it isn't. <laughs> it's good to see you, Ryan. Good to see you, Doug. Brandon. Henry. Hey, Daniel. Daniel? Hello there. Who just said that? Doug. Oh, that was Ryan. Oh, Ryan. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Oh, I better get the uh, club. Here. Hello, oh, yeah. everybody. Welcome, welcome. Lots of people have been asking, where's the Speaker's Hall of Fame? And so we have the beginnings of one that's up on our website here. Uh, admittedly, it's kind of primitive and there aren't as many videos there, but we'll be adding more and more over the next week or so. We've got about 160 videos just so to go through and, and put up here. Uh, but we've got about we've got the first ten here, um, mostly of people who have spoken recently. Some of the the highest in demand uh, talks oh. that have done have gone through. Uh, with in particular, I don't know if Ashish. Yep, there he is, Ashish. You know, I I had somebody ask me just yesterday for your talk. There, people are still coming for your talk. So I put you. It's the number one position on the new Speakers Hall of Fame. Um, probably in the future, it'll be sorted by date. But, but for um, now, <laughs> I want to give a, uh, she's, uh, uh, a uh, shout out. I think I worked with you at Intel a bazillion years ago. It's I, too early. Holy moly. I think we did too. I've only been here 30 years. Oh, yeah. It's great. Uh, it, uh, it's great talking to you. Love to get caught up. It, is, it was a long time ago, man. 
So, and you're in oil and gas now. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to hear what you're doing. Oh, it is so fun. And uh, it's, who would have guessed, uh, as she used to, that I'd be a podcast host, you know, with millions of downloads. I guess it was my sense of humor. Uh, well, yeah, um, you must have. So any, it is so great to to hear for, hear your voice again. What what accounts did you cover, Stu? I didn't tell. Oh no, I uh, I've got my own company now, uh, Sandstone. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, when you were in Intel, what? Because you were you were in uh, territory manager, right? Yes, uh, and uh, covered the central uh, U.S. through uh, uh, about six different states through okay. over the time, and uh, worked in the uh, networking group. Yes, and uh, my uh, dealers and channels uh, also had the supercomputers, and I just I got so lucky to deal with so many different groups. Oh, that's awesome! Well, I'm excited to to hear what you're up to, Sue. Yeah, about five ten and kind of fat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome everybody. Welcome today. We're taking a little bit of a pivot. Uh, recently, we've, as a club, decided to talk about investments that are more than just real estate. And so that is actually going to kick off today. We've got some really good speakers lined up for the next few weeks. We have, of course, Stu Turley, who's here. He's going to be talking to us about investing in oil and gas. Next week, we have uh, Nick King, who is going to be talking to us about how to invest in, high, in, in wine collections and in wine collecting. Uh, so uh, my understanding is he actually syndicates wine collections. He has investors and he, he invests in uh, valuable wines and gives a return. We also have coming up um, how to invest in probate deals in, in I believe, two weeks. And uh, I've contacted Master, masterart.io, uh, which is a group that syndicates the purchase of artwork and provides investor returns through investing in art. And they have not confirmed yet, so I'm still working on them. And if you know of another group that does that, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to get somebody in who, who invests in art and, and provides it as a passive investment opportunity to investors. And then lastly, the, the, one of the more interesting ones or the, maybe the most out of the box in my mind is we have a person who breeds exotic wildlife and he has an exotic wildlife breeding program and a fund that he uses in order to run the program. And he accepts investors into, I'm, I'm not sure what he breeds, wildebeest, yaks, bisons, we'll find out, I guess. But it's an exotic wildlife breeding fund. And uh, apparently Texas has agricultural subsidies that are specifically set aside to uh, encourage uh, roaming livestock, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but encourage encourage biodiversity. Um, so we'll hear from them as well. I think they're in five weeks. So we've got some interesting people that are coming up. Um, a couple of things. Last week, of course, we introduced a more of a beginner's course. If you're interested in taking eight weeks and learning about a couple of different real estate investment strategies, and figuring out which one is the right fit for you. Sean Denny and I launched a coaching program and uh, you can contact me about that if you're interested in that. Uh, very shortly here, I'm gonna be launching our Real Estate Passive Income Academy where uh, we're taking on coaching clients for people that wanna to learn to invest in, real estate, in multifamily passively. And then in the next week or two, I'm gonna be launching the active uh, group as well for people who wanna become general partners. So those are coming up. And then of course, the, the major, I guess, accomplishment for this week is the beginnings of the Speaker Hall of Fame. I know everybody here has been missing that. I get quite a few requests for it. So we have it, it's up at the alternativeinvestingclub.com or .net, either one. And just type in Speaker's Hall of Fame. I will put it up in the, in the, in the chat here. So with that, do we have any opening questions before we kick off and hand it to our speakers? Oh, is, is, uh, is Ray here, Stu? Uh, he'll be here in a minute, but I can go ahead and kick it off into the markets and uh, bring and 
uh, bring him right on in as soon as it's ready. So okay, uh, okay, not, it's not a big deal. Let's find out if there are any questions or any open topics that anybody wants to talk about. Uh, obviously, we've got banks that are failing right now, interest rates that are going up, lots going on with taxes, taxes going up. I know that will. when I worked, yeah, when I worked at Intel, I was very concerned about taxes. Yeah, taxes are our number one expense, um, and they're probably only going to be going up in the in the future. I'd have to say my wife is. I was going. I was going to say kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't line item them. <laughs> um okay uh any 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 open topics that somebody would like to hear about if you have somebody who does uh passive investing and accepts investors please let me know i want to schedule interesting speakers in here and really grow the financial education that this club has so please let me know and um i'll i'll stop talking and wait for 10 seconds for any open topics I got to use a crayon one, two, since I went to Oklahoma State, you know, sorry. Okay. All right, Stu, floor is yours. All right. Hey, thank you guys so much. And Daniel, uh, I just appreciate you so much. And I want to give a shout out to Gupta. It's great to hear your voice again. And uh, anyway, look forward to visiting with you as well, too. Uh, my name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. And uh, I've had an absolute blast uh, working in the oil and gas space and uh, working in uh, other areas. And right now, um, uh, I'm, I have a podcast and I'll be helping Daniel with his and, and everything else. And uh, I would have never guessed in 1977 when I headed off to Oklahoma State that I would be now a podcast host as well as owning my own company. And I'll be getting uh, to about a million downloads for my podcast coming up in a few months just for uh, 2023. So um, anyway, I wanna be a resource for everybody here and I'll make sure Daniel has all my, my stuff. Let's start with taxes, passive income, uh, the world, where it's going and taxes. So, uh, when you're looking at alternative investments and in real estate, uh, I also, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know if you have any questions, we'll answer them. And when RT gets on here, uh, we'll also address any of those questions. So it's a very fluid conversation. So um, what we're uh, working with is uh, in my company, we've been able to raise money for oil and gas companies as part of it. But being the nerd that I am, I was able to work with da uh, data scientists on my side. We've been able to take the oil and gas data from the field uh, all the way to the accounting and then bring it all the way out to the investors and then bring it all the way into the marketing been able to raise millions and millions of dollars for oil companies from the investors. And then as you sit back and take a look, what's going on with uh, the oil and gas market? I can go into that and why it's a, a good investment. Last year on the Dow, I, um, it was Occidental Petroleum was the number one uh, performer on the Dow. And so when you take a look at where Occidental's going, Occidental is going into not only the EMP or the exploration and production, they're going into the carbon capture, utilization and storage or CCUS. And that's really getting into where we need to be to go to carbon net zero. So everybody wants to say either you're green or you're oil and gas. And my belief is that we need to be delivering the lowest kilowatt per hour to everyone on the planet with the least amount of damage or impact to the environment. And the oil companies in the US have done a much better job. The US is, is really taking the lead. We need natural gas, nuclear, wind, solar. We need everything. It's done responsible. So when you take a look at how things are changing, Europe is in an energy crisis right now. Uh, I can talk for hours and days on on all of this but let's kind of start leading into why 
uh, the 1031 exchange in real, in real estate, uh, and then the tax advantages of investing in oil and gas. And Daniel, uh, I'm, I'm really hearing right now, and in, in a lot of the investors that are calling and asking me and saying, uh, hey, what's going on with oil and gas? What's the prices? What's, you know, how do we uh, uh, make money? Because right now, taxes, the stock market is just absolutely, how many 401ks at Intel are doing great? I just thought I'd throw that painful comment out. Sorry if I. So, you know, you, you've got to go out and figure out how to best handle yourself. BlackRock last last year, first half of the year, lost one point seven trillion dollars because of their ESG investments. And so with one point seven trillion, the ESG investment fund managers are not doing it very well. So when you sit back and take a look, why did SVB Bank fail? It's because they also put all their money into just green renewables only and didn't look at the whole portfolio. Yes, we need to invest in renewables. Yes, we need to, and by the way, with Intel being a tech company, I believe in investing in tech. Investing in tech is the only way that we're gonna get to carbon net zero. So. Um, when you sit back and take a look at um, where we're going as a nation, as a country, and as a world, ESG investing, uh, natural gas is, you got to have it. Natural gas is now considered as a necessary product to, in order to get to carbon net zero. Um, years ago, in order to uh, make uh, it a tax investment that it has been available for up to uh, 80% to 90%, even a little bit more than that, as a tax deduction in your um, uh, in your uh, investment. And if you look at the market for supplying oil and gas in the United States, half were private EMP operators. Half are public operators. And so Sandstone, my company, has had the privilege of being able to work with both. Uh, we were able to work with PDC. We were able to work with, uh, I just interviewed uh, CNX, uh, Nick, the CEO over there. And we've been able to work with a lot of um, EMP operators. But uh, I have toned down the operators that I work with because my staff can really tear apart royalties and oil and gas. And RT is just joined on is what it looks like. And I'm going to introduce him and we're going to have a fun little conversation. Uh, RT is a big dog over there at Pecos Operating Corporation. But what you have, there are two different kinds of main investments, and that would be for the 1031 exchange, we're going to talk about royalties. Being able to invest into royalties is, uh, is a D, and, and RT will cover all this. I'm just kind of teeing him up here. And then as you uh, roll into, there's also investing to get you up to that 100% of tax deduction uh, in the uh, oil and gas space. Now, not all oil and gas investments are good. I just want to flat say that. I refuse to work with uh, oil and gas firms that are uh, in bad fields. Uh, we can take a look at the uh, data. We've helped uh, a lot of companies uh, like Combo Curve and Veris, worked with them for years. And we can dig in and see uh, how much production is in the entire area, the field, what layer is it in the San Andreas, is it in the Permian Basin, is it in the Powder River Basin, is it in Colorado, we can see if there's been any accidents. So, I mean, there's just a lot going on uh, with all of these kind of things. And I, I want to bring uh, RT in now at this point. Uh, Ray uh, Trevino the third is actually another podcast host. He's a podcast host with The Crude Truth. It is also going off just as crazy as it can be. And I have a lot of fun. He and I are on the podcast. Uh, three podcasters walk into a bar. 
and uh, we're on there with another industry leader, uh, Global International. So it's kind of fun. I talk to people around the world about energy, about where the market's going, uh, about everything in the investing in that area. So RT, I'm going to open this up. And let's have a fun discussion with Daniel. Oh, you're on mute, Ray. Also, uh, feel free to put your questions in the chat. We'll just judiciously jump in and um, ask those questions as we go along, unless you guys want to hold them to the end. I, I, I am open. Uh, just um, I can definitely answer them as we go the best I can, or uh, we can definitely hold them till the end. I've got plenty of time. First of all, I do apologize. Hello, everyone. Uh, Daniel, um, I am Ray Trevino III with Pecos Country Operating here in Fort Worth, Texas. We are a family owned and operated company, as I'm sure Stu already said. And uh, we've been drilling oil and gas wells um, for a profit since 2011. Uh, my father has been investing in oil and gas wells since the late 1980s. And in a nutshell, in 2011, my father basically opened up the accounting books to me and my brothers and goes, Here's what I am making in the oil and gas industry as investments for part near the last 20 years. Here's what I can now do to add you guys to a payroll. And here's how we can continue to grow and make our money work for us for the next 20, 30 plus years in the oil and gas world. Um, so thank you all very, very much. I hope uh, everybody is having a great day. But yes, uh, we've been working with Stu Turley and his group over at the Standpoint, uh, Stan, uh, Sandstone Group for a good while now. And we just cannot complain. Stu is uh, doing amazing. And yes, I do have a podcast called The Crude Truth. Um, I have the opportunity to talk to individuals that um, are in the oil and gas industry, whether they're an operator like we are, maybe I'm talking to a service company that we would use, or I'm even talking to elected officials that help make the policy in the oil and gas industry. So we really try to do the best that we can. Um, so hello, everyone. How are y'all? Um, Oil and gas is such a great way to uh, hedge against your other investments, uh, to add additional monthly revenue to your portfolio, whether you're going through a 1031 exchange and or just a good old fashioned investment. Um, you know, that is actually what got my father into it in the late 80s was basically he was able to talk to the one of the oil and gas companies that he worked for. They told him about all the great tax benefits. And at the end of it, my father goes, wait a minute, you're telling me I can actually put my money and the dirt in the ground and not give it to Uncle Sam. And they go, yes, you're absolutely right. And he goes, where do I sign up for this? And um, so that's how he got started. In it. Um, and this is a little sad note, but back then in the late 80s, it was actually a two for one investment on your uh, tax um, uh, account and stuff back then. So for every dollar you spent, you actually got two dollars in tax benefits. So rolling on um, 2011, here we formed Pecos Country Energy. And basically, with any type of a working interest deal that you do, you can write off almost 100% of your investment in capital gains. <laughs> uh, they were, Glenn, uh, but they also had some other things that they were doing also uh, with the 1980 Dallas TV show remark there. Um, but um, anyway, with an oil and gas drilling investment, you can write off almost 100% of that investment against your capital gains and or ancillary uh, uh, taxes that you have to pay. Uh, <clears throat> what I mean by that, gentlemen and ladies, is you have intangible drilling costs and tangible drilling costs. Your intangible drilling costs, you can write off up to 80% of those investments. 
And usually on a $100,000 investment in a working interest deal, it's usually $80,000. Now, on the tangible side of it, you can usually write off maybe 5%, maybe uh, 6 So that would be another 5000 that you could write off in tangible drilling costs. However, that doesn't include the 15% that you get in depletion every year in the actual production that you have in the oil and gas industry. So there's a very good way to write off a large portion of your investment and still see, more importantly, monthly cash flow uh, in an oil and gas drilling venture with a company like Pecos Country Operating. Um, um, absolutely, there are companies that deal with regulatory um, as a way to path pay for operators, meaning secure permitting. And, well, um, that's a great question, Glenn. Um, we have to uh, follow the regulations here in Texas with what's actually called the Railroad Commission. And they're the ones that actually oversee all oil and gas drilling ventures and operating ventures in the state of Texas. So that's who we work with. And in fact, if you go to my uh, website, thecrewtruth.com, I've actually had on two of the three commissioners of the oil and gas industry here in Texas on my show um, to talk about all the great things they're doing for the environment and to help out small oil and gas companies uh, like us. Uh, because, uh, you know, as, as much as I wish I could say I'm an Exxon Mobil on a daily basis, uh, you know, I don't have stock. Uh, members to talk to or dividends to pay out. I'm just a good old fashioned oil and gas company um, where most investments we do is actually through our back pocket. So usually we have to make sure that whatever investments and drilling ventures that we're going to do, they need to return dollars to us, let alone our um, uh, individuals that invest with us. Um, uh, one other question I saw early was, uh, I think also from Glenn, um, are you going to explain the good and bad of various ways passive investors are needed with operators? Um, Glenn, please let me know if I answer this question. Uh, you know, uh, they explain the good and bad of various ways. You know, the bad is every blue moon, you still get a dry well. That's the bad. However, the good out of a dry well is you're still able to write off 80% of your investment against, again, like I said, your capital gains and or ancillary uh, income. Now, um, in today's age, for goodness sakes, it is 2023, ladies and gentlemen, and science is there at the end of the day. And it's more about getting the oil out of the ground through production midstream to upstream than it is actually finding the oil. And we've been very blessed to work with a great uh, completions team to really get that oil out of the ground into the pay status on a monthly basis. Um, so I, I hopefully that answered your question. Um, but um, that is really the way we work on this. Hey, Ray, I was going to say, if, if you'd like me to ask questions, um, I've got a million questions I could throw out here. And, and Please do. It, would I'm, you I'm, rather this yes. be more of a discussion or, or do you? Do you... OK, we, so we, I can uh, hang on, uh, Daniel. Uh, we'd love to have this as a podcast, discussion. Aren't you? And, <laughs> uh, and, and also, um, uh, not all uh, the question is, is there a, a companies that deal with regulatory? And you've already answered that one. But. Uh, land drilling refinement and what's the good and bad of the various ways uh, do your research is part of that answer and so uh, there are companies out there as I mentioned early on like mine that do very nice due diligence and can give you a an, an issue because I don't you know I'm not on the investment side of it I'm more on the market side of it so you know Make sure you ask the right questions and forums like yours on this one, Daniel, are critical. So sorry for interrupting, but. 
All right. So I, I can say that most of the people in this group come to oil and gas. I, I don't know if they're new or not, but we definitely have a lot of real estate experience here. And the way I would, I guess one of my first questions is, is when we put our money in as an investor, is, is that money, I assume it's going into an LLC, which is going to own the rights to the minerals of the land. Is it just, are we, are we buying the rights to a single well? Or is it a group of wells? How, how is that organized? Oh, man, Daniel, that is a very great question. Uh, that is on our minerals and royalty side, okay? And uh, so when you buy royalties, and this is the important part, everybody, please listen to this. You can buy a single portion of royalties, or you can buy 100% of those royalties. I definitely recommend 100%. Now, let me clarify what I mean by 100%. Um, let's say Farmer Joe passes away and that the, the daughter and son are going to sell 50% of their royalties that they own under the ground, the minerals, okay, of 100% of 100 acres. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Uh, okay, so you got 100 acres, you're buying 50% of the royalties of 100 acres from Farmer Joe's family. Uh, you want to make sure that you're buying that full 50%, and here's why. Of that 100 acres, sometimes oil and gas companies will say, hey, I'm drilling six wells on 100 acres. It's only going to take up 25 of those acres, these six wells. And your royalties is only going to be for that six wells on that 25 acres. So basically, you've taken 100 acres, y'all, cut it down to 25 acres, and only these six wells is what you will get paid on. That is not something that I recommend in any form or fashion. You want to be a part of that 100 acres. And that actually will be a deeded asset, just like in any real estate investment. You would, uh, we would take that to a um, title company. They would get that titled, insured, and then filed in that county that Daniel has 50% of the minerals in this 100 acres in this area. So does that answer that question, Daniel? I I, I think so. Okay. I, I mean, uh, um, you know, feel free to, I, I will just keep peppering you with questions unless you want to go on a particular topic. So uh, can I ask, let can me I ask know. a question? Yeah, about please. That. So um, this is the first time I'm hearing. I actually, Mike, I'm glad that I didn't ask that question because I was going to ask a basic question of how is this different from investing in quote unquote stocks? Because I'm, I'm new to investing and all that stuff. And this is the first time we're hearing about, well, for me at least, oil and gas investing. So um, is there a section where we can read more about this stuff on your, either your company or your podcast, or where we can get a better idea of what you're telling us to avoid when we are making these sort of investments? Because this is a completely new, like, and I don't know if there's anybody else in the call, this is completely like new terminology and um, kind of, I suppose, uh, mechanics to this sort of investment that you're talking about. You bet. And uh, Daniel and, and uh, Ray, will we will make sure that he has all of the uh, uh, recommended resources and we'll provide all of those for you. So because it is a bit of a uh, your head exploding just a little bit, uh, yeah. uh, you know, as you sit back and go, especially with the tax rates uh, rolling up, uh, taxes look like they are going to be just rolling through the roof. And, uh, you know, as an old Intel employee, I did have that problem a few years. So uh, taxes and I, I don't like paying any more than I need to. Uh, I don't mind paying my taxes, just looking for those tax deductions. And we want to make sure we can give you and arm you with enough data uh, to look at and, and say, okay, here's what I'm looking at. And that's what I just enjoy being a resource uh, for folks like uh, Ray and investors and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, just a, a sort of brief follow-up to that is this, you're not investing in stocks of your company, you're investing in I, the resource, the, the wells. And um, yeah, can you do a little, just a brief explanation of that? Absolutely. Great question. And, and can you say your name real quick? Nadosium. Nadosium. Well, great yeah, yeah, question, yeah, Nadosium. Yeah. Again, Ray Trevino, very nice to meet you, Nadosium. Nice to meet you, yeah, thank you. Um, okay. I have already talked about two different investments in the oil and gas industry, working interest and mineral slash royalties. That, that's one. Okay. So in a minerals royalties investment, um, you physically own the minerals under the ground. Okay. So I'm going to use ExxonMobil as an example, because, um, you know, in some of my minerals, I've had the opportunity um, to have ExxonMobil come in and drill oil wells on my minerals. So for an example, ExxonMobil has already been out there on that 100 acres. Um, and if I've purchased my portion, and again, it covers 100% of that 100 acres, I'm just getting 50% of that 100 acres, not you know 50 acres of that 100 acres. It is 50% of the 100 acres, okay? Um, Exxon's already drilled like five wells on 25 acres, and they now, now have permits to drill another 20 wells on the additional 75 acres. I own the minerals underneath the ground. I don't own the surface, okay? There is a landowner that owns the surface. They would own the house, okay? However, it is titled deeded assets that I own those minerals underground. And any wells that are drilled at zero feet down, I would own a portion of the oil and gas that is drilled every day right off the top, okay? In a working interest deal, what I would do is, hey, I just leased up 100 acres. I'm going to drill six wells. You're going to receive a percentage of the working interest on those six wells, and you will get first right of refusal on any other wells that we drill. And the plan is on those six wells to get your initial investment back in the first 10 to 14 months. With royalties, it is a lot more conservative and you're looking at a PV4, maybe usually about a five or six, where you have your initial investment back, usually in about five or six years, and God willing, 30 years worth of additional revenue. With um, and, and that's with both, but with the royalties as well. Does that make any sense, Nazanin? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, boy, yeah, this, yeah. <laughs> Right so I'll, I'll, let yeah. me do this. I want to stick it with everyone here. I want to stick with the 1031 exchange into oil and gas royalties and minerals. Okay. So after, after we do that, can I hit you with some questions? We got quite a few in the chat. Great. No, no. Thank you guys for all asking questions. Um, and I want to answer them all. So thank you all. Um, everybody here. Okay. Y'all, y'all buy a property for $250,000. Y'all sell it for $500,000. You do not know where you want to place it. And it's cash clear. You don't own any debt on that $500,000. It is paid for. It is done. You have to find a like mind, a like kind like uh, property to invest in so to, that you are not paying capital gains on $250,000. You can go into an oil and gas investment whether it's a drilling venture in working interest or a royalties mineral or, uh, project, roll that money into our project or a project like it. Roll that 500000 and you are not paying capital gains tax on any of that. The, the U.S. government recognizes that oil and gas is a light kind investment, uh, just like real estate. The big difference here, guys, you're not having to deal with the TNT, tenants and toilets. You have a true way of mailbox money 
additional monthly revenue, what you're looking for in your real estate projects on a monthly basis for at least the next 20 to 50 years. It sounds like maybe another difference here too is that when you're rolling over into another property, you have to find a property that exactly matches the amount of equity that you're bringing into the deal. Sounds like yeah. here you can roll into a larger project. So, you know, if you had 500,000 or 700 or whatever it happened to be, it could be rolled into a, a particular uh, oil and gas deal. Absolutely. So for an example, and I'm going to pick on Nazim here since he's, he spoke up and, and thank you very much. And anybody else, please ask a question. Uh, but let's say I've got a minerals property that's worth a million dollars. It is cash flowing at 25% annually right now. Nazanium has 500,000 and Daniel has $500,000. They can both roll into that $1 million investment and both then receive 25% annually on that income producing minerals property and receive a, income starting day one that's also the goal like you know so you don't have to worry about waiting to find a tenant uh you know business owners to come rent your space anything like that that's pretty big because 1031s as you know you only have 45 days in order to identify your potential other properties and if uh if you can roll it into something that gives you a percentage of its profit back that gives you i assume a lot more possibilities or it might be easier to find something Yes, uh, let's go for this for one more example here, Daniel. Um, you're waiting for a, uh, let's say the capital, because I, I don't know how many of y'all are in California, but uh, I know one of the famous landmarks is the Capitol Records building there in Los Angeles. And let's say Capitol Records building, you just know is about to go up for sale, um, but it's not up for sale yet and you know you can buy it. However, that window of 45 days to identify um, is going to come up before that property comes up. You can identify one of these minerals projects, get into it, start to receive that cash flow. And as soon as that capital records building comes up for sale, boom, you can then sell your minerals and then roll that into your next real estate deal. Does that make sense? That is, that's actually a really powerful technique, having some way to hold temporarily until your property becomes available. That, that's great. I love that. Yes. All right. I'm going to start reading through some of the questions here. And I, I'm, since I'm new to oil and gas, I'm probably not going to be as good at ordering them. I usually like to build a narrative that goes on. So I'm just hey, going to read them in order. Okay. Um, yeah. Hey, before you jump, can I just do a quick follow-up on that? Um, so is it, it, that implies a level of liquidity and someone who's holding that asset uh, as allowing someone to sort of, you know, bop in and bop out if you're doing the temporary, you know, oil and gas, you know, mineral uh, claim on your, on your royalties, whatever it is, while you're waiting for the building to go. Is that really that common that you've got that level of implied liquidity and entry exit? Because that's way different than I think what classic real estate would be, where you're, you, you know, especially as a passive investor, you're you're beholden to a, a GP's decisions. Um, well, great question, Glenn. First of all, first and foremost, again, most of these mineral royalty deals, you are a deeded asset holder. OK, so that is your property. OK, um, with a good CPA and accountant, you could even go borrow against. it. OK, um, so if hypothetically, and I'm going to use this again as a hypothetical, you're receiving 25% annually on five wells drilled on 100 acres. And they drill three more wells in the six months that you're waiting for capital records building to come available. Guess what? Your asset is now worth more money. So worst case scenario, you're going to sell it for the exact price that you bought it for why you get three to six months worth of revenue. And then, uh, so no, there is always a market for this type of investment. Uh, does that answer that one, Glenn? I think so. Thanks. I have some follow-up questions to that. So okay. you, you said you're, you're a deeded asset holder, um, but in, in, you've also said you can have a percentage of the income. So 
is it that there's an LLC holding title to the entire property and you're, you know, an investor in the LLC? Or it sounds like the structure is different here. Yes, sir. No, sir. Um, you are actually a deeded owner in the minerals itself. You're not in a uh, with an LLC. I, I wouldn't recommend that. Now, you could let a company like Pecos manage that, okay? And I, I use quotations, everybody, because there's usually a fee that comes with managing, okay? Um, but no, sir, it is as if uh, you it is your God-given right, okay? And that's here in Texas, y'all, that you own these minerals and you get money for any oil well that is drilled below the surface of the ground. Are there oil wells above the surface? I'm no. Just a silly, okay, that's just the yeah. way it's worded. Okay. But as, as RT said, uh, Daniel, I'm sorry for uh, stumbling in. And, and as the, uh, RT said, it's below. I'm currently working with uh, fairly large groups. We don't have the legal uh, background on this yet, but the royalty questions for solar farms and wind farms has come up. What happens if you're a royalty owner and they drop a solar farm on your uh, royalties? We are proving it right now that it you get the energy uh, royalties off of that land. So I, I love talking wind, solar, energy, and everything else in the market. I just want to throw that out there. The royalties mean that's a deeded property with no toilets. Hey, did you know that Texas actually has four of the largest wind farms in the world uh, here in Texas? And um, there's all types of ways to make a dollar. Even with Bitcoin, if you use that, if, uh, if your royalties and your minerals um, produce natural gas, you can then um, run an entire supercomputer from a storage box and you would still get a cut of that as well if you have the right people negotiating for it, type of a deal. I love Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, uh, RT, great point, RT. Yeah. Um, uh, the ESG involvement, because energy, uh, Bitcoin mining is just uh, horrific on energy. However, uh, working with those Bitcoin miners looking for that stranded gas or looking for any of the ESG, I, I would have never guessed years ago that I would be using the term ESG, Bitcoin and mining in the same breath. You know, so RT and I have talked about that in the past and I've been able to help a lot of folks on that. Oh, yes. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking here. I apologize. I'm looking at some well, of the I, questions. I can read the questions off to you. Just oh, okay. So you don't yeah. have to concentrate on that. Um, Brandon is asking, are you guys bullish on investing in distressed assets? For example, acquiring a underperforming field at a lower multiple and then improving it. And I guess the follow-up question is, or is it you know purely discovery or is there some other mechanism? Well, great. Brandon, that is a great question, and I'm going to be crude. Strippers have been good to my family. Um, and everybody here, what I mean by that word yes, is thank you. an old well is called a stripper well, okay? So this is a well that probably used to produce um, anywhere, uh, no, numerous amounts of, of oil, okay? But nowadays is producing maybe at most... 10 barrels of oil a day. Uh, this is a well that may have started at a 20, maybe a hundred. Um, but nowadays it's only at 10 barrels and all the major oil and gas companies don't want to touch it anymore because it does, because obviously they've lost 90% of their revenue if it was a hundred barrel oil well in the beginning. Um, so that is something that Pecos has done. Pecos Country Operating has done from day one. Now, we do also invest in new wells in the same area because since you already have the geology, you have the know-how, there are areas where we can't produce new wells. So we like to mix old wells with new wells. Now, uh, a little piece of insight here, Brandon, we are actually working on legislation here in the state of Texas that will give the same kind of tax deductions to reworking old wells that you do to um, 
basically drilling a new well. We don't know exactly what kind of numbers, but we're talking about those intangibles at 80% and tangibles at about 5%. Uh, we're working on legislation right now to approve, hey, come in, rework older wells. You're going to stimulate the economy of smaller areas, and you're going to put less of a carbon footprint by going in to rework uh, existing oil fields to do reworks. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, RT. This is Brandon. Um, and by the way, I saw your podcast with JP. So um, I was familiar with the stripper thing. Uh, and by the way, great podcast, man. That was uh, very fun to watch with you two. Um, and just a quick, you know, um, some insight I had on that question. I, I was uh, I, I was reading another, there was another investor in, uh, I think the, uh, well, it, I think it was the Dallas area. And, and they did something like that. And interestingly, they they found a lot of those deals off market. That's sort of their go-to, you know, versus a listing. Uh, you know, they wanted to really try to find stuff off market to try to get a low, lower multiple. And they found that that um, there's so many assets that get passed down from generation to generation. So say, you know, your grandfather was an oil man, successful one. It gets passed down, you know, a couple generations. The third generation may not, you know, have the know-how to operate it or not, or the interest or something, right? And so they have these these wells that are just uh, not performing. They don't really know what to do. And then, so, you know, they can get scooped up with somebody that comes in and, and knows how to, you know, you know, fix leakage or, you know, better chemicals to extract for better, you know, yield. And, you know, they can, the, and the molt and the, uh, the upside is, is just tremendous. So I was just, uh, I was really curious. And they said, you know, that you'd be surprised the vast opportunity in Texas with those types of, of deals that are off market where people get these assets, they don't know how to operate them. They don't, you know what I mean? They didn't get the pass down knowledge from their grandfather or grandmother to really operate them. So um, that to me was like kind of, nobody probably knows that unless you're sort of in the Texas area. Well, no, that's a great question. We don't, I don't like to use the word off market because, and again, I, I understand that term and I, and I love it. Um, but, you know, we've had families come to us, like you're talking about, basically saying, we want out, we're done. Yeah. Okay? And yeah. we had one of those scenarios just recently with uh, somebody uh, who wanted to dip his toes in the oil and gas industry. So we uh, put a package together. It was already, a, very small. Okay, guys, this one was very small, but uh, basically uh, producing about 15 barrels of oil a day. Um, and all we have to do is literally do some cleanups and we'll be at 30 barrels a day in no time flat. We were able to give this guy on a drilling venture a 25% estimated return at the 15 barrels of oil a day. So when you increase that to 30 then uh, another 15 to 20 uh they're going to be looking at their investment back probably uh god willing in the next 10 to 14 months as long as the weather holds up here in north texas so yes those type of deals are very often um and i want to say something else and i'll, and I'll let y'all all in uh there's a town here in north texas called wichita falls um, don't quote me, uh, you can fact check me, but I think a three bedroom, one bath house is like maybe less than $100,000 today. And you have family oil companies that supports maybe five to 10 people, and they're maybe making 125 to 175 barrels of oil a day. At even today's price at $68 oil, that is a great living, okay? And so when these guys get tired and they're done, like you're talking about, they want to sell. And we're, we have the opportunity sometimes because we're literally at the gas station or maybe just at the local restaurant. And it's like, hey, we know you have capital. Do you want to buy us? Here's what we want. Uh, no different, really, guys, than when y'all are, uh, when you get somebody that wants to sell their property and it may be distressed. Uh, so there, there's really no difference there. All so right. Great just, question, Brandon. Just and to let you know, I, we've only got you. nine minutes left. Um, oh. So we're not going to get through all the questions, but there's a lot of great ones in here. 
Um, I think one of the things that a lot of people want to know are what are the tax benefits for people like we have here, working people that have regular jobs? How do you maximize your tax benefits? No, great question. And I, I'm pulling up my notes on that. Um, anybody can invest in oil and gas. I saw that that was one of the questions. Um, we usually recommend for somebody to come in at usually about $100,000 just so that they can actually see a real return on their investment. Uh, okay, uh, so that's usually what we like to recommend. Um, but no, in a drilling venture or royalty, you can have up to a certain amount of non-accredited investors. You're just basically on the paperwork, in our case, of the private placement memorandum. Um, you're basically telling me that this investment will not break me. Okay, this is not my life savings. This is nothing more than a pure investment that I hope grows. So there's a lot that goes into that uh, as far as not accredited investors go. Uh, but really, let's go ahead and use an example real quick, guys. All right, you make an investment of $110,000. So right off the bat, your intangible drilling costs are $88,000. Uh, your tangibles may be around $3,000. So basically your net participation after one year, when you do the math, may be around just $71,000. So you've been able to write off a majority of your um, investment and still seeing cash flow. Now, one other question I saw was on a 1031 exchange. Uh, if you have the right accountant, and Daniel, I think Daniel and his team do, um, that you can actually 1031 exchange into a drilling venture, not pay your capital gains, and then still write off 80% of that investment against your intangibles and your uh, annual income that you would have to write off, okay? Why, and here's why. Uh, the intangible drilling costs are the pipe, uh, you know, the all those things, and so it's it, the, your good CPA is going to make the argument that, hey, those things are intangible. They're like, you know, whether or not the money came in on this side of it, you can still write off the certain amount. And a good CPA will do that. For you. And right. no, wells are not primarily fracking uh, 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 a sheesh. Um, a lot of the wells we do these days are still vertical wells because that's where we see a lot more of the returns. The big majors are really doing the horizontals because they're seeing anywhere between five to 10,000 barrels of oil a day. For an example, I've got a project right now that would just produce ultra conservatively 450 barrels of oil a day. Uh, we'll see our investment back in less than 10 months. And that's on six wells, okay? So, uh, but no, we, we uh, not all wells are, are frack these days. Uh, let me uh, just throw this at the frack. ESG on the new fracking uh, systems and the fluids are very good, not like in the older days. You can even drink the flack, uh, frack fluid, uh, like uh, the CEO over at Liberty. It was fun to see him drink it as well, too. So, uh, fracking has a uh, longer bad, re, uh, you know, uh, name out there. And me being the environmentalist, it is very important for me to know that that frack is being done correctly. I, I think this is a quick question, but is there a minimum to invest? Um, and do, do you usually, have to be accredited? Uh, yeah, you know, we use, again, the 100,000, Daniel, is, is the number. However, if somebody is interested, please give us a call and we can see if we can do something. Okay. Um, at that point, you're looking at like 0.0003% or, you know, some kind of weird number. Um, and we're just looking for people to, uh, that, hey, you're going to see a return. For an example, I heard a, a story. I'll be real brief. Um, somebody got a check one day, years later, for $100. And they went to their secretary and go, hey, I just got a check for $100. What was this for? So the secretary spent, secretary spent the next three days researching where this money came from. And it turned out it was a $100,000 investment three years ago. And all the guy could say was, I guess I should have invested more. You know, I mean, you know, 
Um, but um, but anyway, no, we can work with individuals, especially somebody that wants that is very interested. My father believes in this. You all have everybody has to start somewhere because God knows he did. And, um, you know, we're working with a group right now that is just a little under 100,000. And uh, we were able to put them in something very well and, and kind of work with. Um, hey, Ray, Ray, really quickly, we're going to do something that we haven't usually done in this group because we recently exited Intel. We've got a new website. I would love everybody here, if you're willing, to turn your video feed on. And we're going to take a group photo here. Oh, uh, okay. okay. This will be great just to put up at the front of the web page. Uh, so everybody, oh, look at this. This is gr Oh, my goodness. We should do this Thank all the time. This is great. Thank you, Daniel. And I just want to give a shout out to all the Intel folks and RT and Daniel. This was a lot of fun. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Guys, I, I, am, I am nobody. Thank you all for just doing this just now. I am nobody special. I am. I, you know, I, I am a, um, a Hispanic myself. Uh, I could argue uh, uh, first generation, but my mother was the first generation uh, to go to college. Uh, so the same with my father. And, and so for all y'all just to even put up face right now and, and God knows how important Intel is to the world. So thank you. All right. All right. We're going to take the photo in and, and everybody raise your hands and smile. We're going to take the photo in three, two, one. Got it. Awesome. Thank you, guys. That'll go right up at the front in the hero section. Bola, um, trading oil futures is great. Uh, Warren, uh, not Warren Buffett, uh, T. Boone Pickens made billions with a B doing it. I just did an interview with Tom Singh from TCU, who knows that extensively. So please go back and watch that episode of The Crude Truth with Tom Singh. He knows all about futures. All right. And lastly, could both of you, Ray and Stu, can you give your contact information so that people can reach out to you? Go ahead, Ray. Uh, again, Ray Trevino the third. You can reach me. I'll, I'll give it to you at RT at Pecos Country Energy.com. Um, you can Google that. Uh, my, our website is PCOperating.com. And then also you can find me at thecrudetruth.com. And, and if, if, if everybody here wanted to do something at a different time, please get with Daniel. Maybe we can schedule a different time and, and uh, uh, venue to do something like this. I'll, I'll have that up at alternativeinvestingclub.com as well in the, in the Speakers Hall of Fame section. Hey, Stu? and again, thank you, Daniel. Uh, this was a huge amount of fun. Uh, Stu Turley, it's S. Turley, T-U-R-L-E-Y, at sandstone-group.com. You can find me on uh, LinkedIn. You can find me on my news site, energynewsbeat.com. Uh, my podcast is the Energy Newsbeat, and i uh, love to just help people. If you have any questions, if you want to start a podcast, give me a call. I want to be a help. I'm addicted to being a podcast host. It's the goofiest thing on the planet. Can we put that on the chat, please? Like, uh, both of, is it possible for you guys? Yeah, to... if, if both of you would type your email addresses into the chat, that would be useful. And and yeah. while you're doing that, can we have everybody here take themselves off mute and thank our guests for being here? Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll throw this out there. If, if, if there's enough interest in something like this, we could probably put a pretty good group together um, to do something, uh, whether that's minerals or drilling. So uh, with this size of group, I mean, even 10 people, I, I think we could do something pretty awesome. So just throwing that out there. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say, like, uh, this is a lot of, I, we, we didn't think it's going for everybody yet, so it would be great to be able to do this again, like have a group, because like there's a lot of information that we, and a lot of questions that we didn't even get to get to. So it would be very nice to do this. Uh, please uh, reach out, and Daniel? Uh, if there's a question board or there's a bunch of questions, if it's markets, is where's oil going? How's oil? How's all that? I work with RT on all of his stuff as well, too. We'll answer all your questions. Please use us as a resource. All right. Sounds good. Yes, there's an exit strategy. Also, uh, Ashish, I'm just trying to trying to see here. So. <laughs> 
Hey, everybody, you, have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you all next week here at the Alternative Investing Club. Friday Thank you, noon. everybody. Thank okay. you. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo. Oh, yeah, happy Cinco de Mayo.